All right. Now, let's get to the meat of the matter. Now that you know where it can come from, what does creatine actually do? The research is, in fact, quite extensive, so I had to, for the sake of this brief mini-lecture, trim it down to the most important and most validated things. But, of course, the biggest of all of these is muscle power recovery and even some neurological outcomes, as we'll get to in just a moment. But let's start with the big one, which is muscle power and performance. Creatine is the gold standard for high-intensity, short-duration activities. And creatine has been shown to increase strength by up to about 10% and power output by potentially up to 15%, power being a, a function of physical measurement of just the strength over time, something like jumping or sprinting. And that is all versus placebo. So it's been done in well-controlled trials. Now, that is huge for elite and competitive weightlifting and sprinting or similarly aggressive activities. And of course, it works by boosting ATP regeneration, allowing harder, longer efforts and enhancing even the size of muscle and protein synthesis. A 1999 study showed that creatine users gained two to four pounds more of lean mass than placebo after 12 weeks of resistance training. Now, I should add that part of that is going to be water that where creatine gets saturated into a muscle, water will also follow that. Now, what about recovery? I'd mentioned that because creatine also aids recovery. Intense exercise causes mus muscle damage and inflammation, and creatine can help. A 2004 report found creatine reduced muscle damage markers by 20 to 40% after the most damaging of all exercises, eccentric exercise. So that would be like the negative, the so-called negative of a movement, which can tear the muscle more than the concentric or the positive movement. It also can speed glycogen resynthesis, so muscles refuel faster. All of this is just to say that there's the potential for less soreness and you being able to recover and be more ready for your next workout. Now, I've alluded to the brain, and there are indeed benefits. Creatine is not just for muscles. It is a brain booster. And our brain uses about 20% of our body's ATP. And neurons rely on creatine phosphate for that rapid energy regeneration, just getting ATP up there whenever it needs it. In fact, creatine improves short-term memory and reasoning in healthy adults, especially under stress or sleep deprivation. This is particularly true for people who may be creatine deficient. A 2007 study showed vegetarians have given that were, that were just given five grams of creatine daily, which is pretty modest for six weeks, had better working memory and processing speed. For Alzheimer's, the evidence is early, but quite promising. Alzheimer's involves, of course, as you know, impaired brain energy metabolism, and creatine can help. This is a concept I've described previously, looking at the energetic origin of Alzheimer's disease and challenging the plaque-based origin of Alzheimer's disease. And let me just reiterate something I spent an entire episode previously discussing, which is Alzheimer's disease is not a result of plaques in the brain. The plaques in the brain are simply coincident and probably themselves a manifestation of metabolic problems. Alzheimer's disease is, an, is a metabolic problem. It is the brain going hungry. So what if we can restore that energy? And that's where we have some evidence, including a 2011 study that showed creatine slowed cognitive decline in early stage Alzheimer's. Now, that is an active area of research, so it wouldn't surprise me if we revisited this topic in a year or two. There are going to be even more studies that we could mention. But creatine has also been shown to have potential in Parkinson's and traumatic brain injury, protecting neurons and reducing damage. So people coming in having had some impact or hit to the head, traumatic brain injury, TBI, it's not uncommon for them to get infused a cocktail of things like ketones and lactate in order to try to ensure that the brain has abundant energy. Well, wouldn't you know it, creatine also makes the cut in these cognitive cocktails. There's also a little evidence to suggest that creatine may even help reduce depression, 
which again, looking at the energetic origins of memory and mood problems, it's no surprising. It's, it's no surprise that if you can increase creatine, you increase creatine phosphate, which enhances your ability to regenerate ATP in the brain and these neurons that are perhaps going hungry, and you reduce the risk of the problem.